Hey everyone, welcome to the Learning PySpark with Databricks series. In this video, we're exploring the history behind technologies like MapReduce, Hadoop, and Apache Spark. These technologies shaped modern data processing. We'll cover how these frameworks evolved to handle big data challenges. In the early 2000s, companies like Google and Yahoo were generating vast amounts of data. Traditional databases struggled to handle this surge in volume, velocity, and variety of data. This led to the need for distributed processing, spreading data across multiple machines to process it in parallel. In 2004, Google introduced MapReduce, a framework designed to process massive datasets efficiently. They also described the distributed storage system, the Google File System, GFS. In 2006, two engineers were inspired by Google's research and developed Hadoop under the Apache Software Foundation. Hadoop had two main components, HDFS, which stands for Hadoop Distributed File System, which is a scalable file system that stores data across multiple machines, and MapReduce, the distributed processing engine that followed Google's model. Hadoop made big data processing accessible to organizations by allowing them to store and process data using clusters of commodity hardware. So let me explain how MapReduce works. MapReduce splits the work into three phases. In the map phase, each worker processes a chunk of data. In the shuffle and sort phase, intermediate results are transferred across nodes and reorganized. And in the reduce phase, the results are aggregated to produce the final output. So let me provide a high level illustration of this. Let's say you have a massive sales data set containing billions of transaction records. The data includes details such as the product name and the sales amount. Your goal is to calculate the total sales by product. So this dataset is stored across multiple nodes in a Hadoop cluster using HDFS. Each node stores a block of data. In this example, you have three nodes storing chunks of the data. So during the map phase, each worker node processes the chunk of data stored on its machine. It reads the data, applies a function, in this case, grouping sales by product, and then outputs the key value pairs. Each node has created an intermediate result based on its local data. We say intermediate result because node one, two, and three contain partial results. We can't say what the total sales for product A is yet until we can combine the data from all nodes that contain the partial results for product A. So the next step is the shuffle and sort phase. The intermediate results are shuffled and sorted across nodes. Intermediate results for the same product are sent to the same single node. This phase ensures that each node receives all records related to a specific product. Node 1 receives all sales for product A, Node 2 receives all sales for product B, and Node 3 receives all sales for product C. And in the reduce phase, each node aggregates the data it received to produce the final result. In this example, the reduce function sums up the sales amounts for each product. Node 1 aggregates the sales for product A, Node 2 aggregates the sales for product B, and Node 3 aggregates the sales for product C. So these results are then written back to HDFS as the final output. So why is MapReduce so powerful? It's because this distributed approach allows companies to process petabytes of data efficiently by spreading the work across many machines. In this simple illustration, we have three nodes, but we can have many more nodes in a cluster. By minimizing data transfer and processing data locally, Hadoop and MapReduce handle large-scale batch jobs in a scalable, fault-tolerant manner. This architecture was crucial for early big data pioneers like Google, Yahoo, and Facebook. While Hadoop was revolutionary, it had significant drawback, specifically disk I.O. Intermediate results were read from and written to disk at each stage of processing, which slowed down performance. This made Hadoop inefficient for iterative processes like machine learning and real-time analytics. In 2009, Matei Zaharia, who was a researcher at UC Berkeley, set out to solve Hadoop's performance issues. He developed Apache Spark, an engine designed to process data in memory, bypassing the repeated disk I.O. bottlenecks. Spark gained widespread attention in both research and industry. The project was donated to the Apache Software Foundation in 2013 and transitioned to the Apache 2.0 license. Spark introduced several key improvements over Hadoop. 
in-memory processing made Spark up to 100 times faster for some workloads. Spark supports multiple types of workloads, including batch processing, real-time streaming, machine learning, and SQL queries. And Spark works with various storage systems like HDFS, Amazon S3, and Azure Data Lake Storage. These improvements allowed Spark to become one of the most popular big data engines today. In 2014, the creators of Spark, including Matei Zaharia, co-founded Databricks to provide managed Spark solutions for organizations. Over the next decade, major companies like Netflix, Alibaba, and Uber leveraged Spark for data pipelines, real-time analytics, and machine learning, solidifying its position as a leading data processing framework. Today, Spark continues to evolve, with support from both open source contributors and platforms like Databricks, which have expanded Spark's ecosystems with features such as Delta Lake, structured streaming, and machine learning workflows.